So clearly, COVID-19 took all of us by surprise, and we responded as quickly as was possible, uh, given the existing technology. Now, hopefully there will not be any pandemics in the future, but if there are pandemics in the future, there are a number of things that we learned one, of course, has to do with radios and precision. But the more interesting question is really the boundary as to what should be part of the default infrastructure that is universally deployed across phones in the world. This is a paper that written by a number of authors. And all of us were involved in the development of the protocol and then later in the implementation and the integration of five different national apps. One of the things that became clear was that the proven technique to handle epidemics, which is known as contact tracing, was overwhelmed by the sheer speed of the disease. And the opportunity was that everybody had a supercomputer in their pockets. And so the question is, how do we complement existing proven techniques of contact tracing with the new technologies that were readily available? Doing this without uh, impacting the privacy of individuals was important because the risk was, of course, that we would turn this into a massive uh, surveillance tool. So one of the first aspects was identifying the best available radio technologies. Bluetooth was far from perfect, it was never designed to precisely measure distance, but the advantage is that every phone had a, a Bluetooth-enabled device. The question then becomes, from a protocol perspective, is how do you identify uh, contacts after the fact? Because if two people were next to each other at one point in time, at that point, neither knows that they're positive uh, or potentially infectious. And this is where we quickly came up with this notion that the act of matching happens on the phone and not in any central authority. And so what we did is we came up with a protocol that was specifically designed to allow this function, but did not lead to the collection of any information in any centralized service. And that was done through the magic of decentralized matching. Now, coming up with a protocol is only part of the answer. You also need to, of course, make sure that the protocol can be implemented. And that turned out to be particularly challenging because the operating systems on these phones, either Apple or Android, uh, were not designed to support background operations with Bluetooth. So we needed to have some cooperation by the operating system vendors. It's kind of interesting, when we reached out to them, they were asking about what we had in mind from a solutions perspective. Turns out that a few weeks after these first interactions, both Google and Apple decide to provide support in their operating systems for a protocol derived from DP3T, which is the protocol that we proposed. Getting public health authorities who were overwhelmed at the time was also difficult. And so we had to come up with very simple ways to integrate with uh, public health authorities. The critical thing that we learned is that it's not just about privacy. It is also about control to determine what is possible, what can be done. And one of the things that is obvious in retrospect is that the two companies that control the mobile phone operating system have complete control over what you can do with phones. There is nothing precise about classic contact tracing. You ask somebody how far they were away from somebody else three days ago, the answers will be inherently imprecise. And so there's a lot of imprecision. What matters at the end is that you have a way to notify people so that humans can be at the center of the response. They can interpret the response, change their behavior. Technology did not succeed in stopping the epidemic. And of course, this is one of the big, big takeaways of the technology, that technology was not a single solution to the problem. It had to be deployed as part of a collective set of. It doesn't matter how good the application is, how good the solution is. It needs to be explained and communicated. Find out more in Deploying Decentralized Privacy Preserving Proximity Tracing, a contributed article in the September 2022 communications of the ACM. Mm -hmm.